So when you're growing up, you may have dreamed of having an awesome tree house. Well, Mike Holmes did too, and he built one when he was a kid. He also, you know, rewired his family's house and finished their basement by the time he was 12. Okay, so his dad did help a bit. The fact is, it was Mike's pops who taught him the importance of doing a job right the first time. And it's the passion that got Mike his own show, Holmes on Holmes. And I'm gonna rip this place apart. I'm gonna put it back together. Mike stepped in to help people who had been screwed over by shoddy contractors, and he's lent a hand to a lot of people along the way. He rebuilt homes in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Let's make it right here. Let's do something about this. And that leads into his next step on this journey, a new show called Holmes Makes It Right. Mike tackles big-time renos for the communities that need them most. Tell me you're not doing this electrical. Who did this? We did it. <laughs> Well worn. Well worn. <laughs> well worn. Uh, congratulations. Why, well, thank you. Why, well, thank you. It's, a, it's really like every year or so, it's another show, but it's kind of the same intellectual core, isn't it? It is. I would like to think of that. It's, uh, to me, it's about making it right. That's actually how the name came up. Holmes yeah. makes it right. I wanted make it right, yeah. but it seemed that everyone else said, I got to have my name in it. I, Go figure. You know that I won't make it right, yes? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting about what you've done, and also the guy has done it in the States as well when we're talking about the dirty jobs concept, which is bringing a dignity back to blue collar. For the longest time, you know, when I, when I was a kid, the kid was going to go up to be a plumber like his pops or an electrician, but over time, that went away. You know why? Because I think a lot of the parents that were contractors, masons, uh, carpenters, and so on, I think they told their kids, don't get in the industry. You know, go get a computer, go be a doctor, go do something. My knees are gone, my back's gone, it's a pain in the butt, you know, you got to try and collect the money. I think it, be it just got such a bad stigma to it that no one wanted to do it. And then there was change. You know, we had government changes. They pulled it. When I was in school, I had, I had sheet, sheet metal class, carpentry class, yeah. uh, welding, all in young, six, seven, and eight. A before O or up you go. Right. I learned that's that in high school. I learned that. Yeah. But now that's taken out of young school, right? That was high school. I'm talking about before that. Right. That's taken out. I, I think that we lost a lot of the temptation along the way to actually get into the trades. Uh, I like what you said, though, because I do believe right now it is being... It's cool to get in the trades. We've had a 6% increase in women in the trades. We're seeing young guys that want to do this. I'm seeing a little guy in the audience there that probably wants to sling a hammer. Is, get your tool belt with you? Dude, that's my contractor. <laughs> 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 he built the most badass tree fort you'll ever see. <laughs> that's everybody's first. You mind if I inspect it? <laughs> <laughs> we cut corners. Um, that's actually your first contracting job for a lot of kids, isn't it, really, building a tree fort? I built a three-bedroom a three bedroom tree fort when I was six years old. Seriously? Yes. Do you, man, do you my know... dad thought I was a freak. He's like, where's all my wood? Where's my screws? Where's my tools? Dude, if you built that tree fort in Vancouver, you could rent it out for four grand a month. I know. <laughs> How'd I have known? <laughs> you could have pulled it off. What was it like working with Brad Pitt and Angelina, now that you had that time? Um, it was really nice. You know, at the beginning, I had already built the whole place and this, the six houses and done the major one that I did that was then the uh, Category 5 hurricane, but I didn't meet them till afterwards. And, and once I did meet Brad, I thought, man, you are really down to earth. I really expected him to be coming in and, you know, having bodyguards around him, give me two minutes of his time. We sat and we act for a while. And before I actually met with him, uh, I met with Angelina, and she was with her kids in the park, and there was 45 minutes I was talking to her, and she was, she's like, I know who you are. My husband watches your show. <laughs> then I knew. Okay, so we're, we're yakking away, and paparazzi comes out of the bushes from everywhere taking pictures because I'm sure Angelina's hanging around with this guy in overalls. Angelina's, <laughs> Angelina's new man. <laughs> um, take me back to the stuff that your father taught you. I know your father, you know, there was a real tragedy, you know, at the end, but is a lot of this about you honoring him? Uh, I, you know, I think I come from him. My dad was a good guy. Everyone loved him. The neighbors are like, Jim, they go, Jim, come fix my kitchen. Come fix this. And he would. The guy worked, like, many hours. Maybe I also got that. Way too much working. But he was the type of guy that just cared, and he went out and helped everyone. Uh, what I got from him, you know, was the beginning. I, I thought he was Superman. I really did. I thought he could do anything. Then I found out he really couldn't. You know, when I was 22, and I'm 21, 22, I, sh I showed him the $60,000 bathroom I designed and completed. 
And uh, he's like, oh, he starts swearing at me. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? And that's when I got a big frog in my throat because that's when he goes, Mike, I taught you stuff that, you know, like, I don't even understand what you do anymore. You talk codes, I don't even know. You know, like, you've gone way beyond me. And I'm like, no, I haven't, Dad. You can do this in your sleep. He goes, I can't do this in my sleep. You can. That's a huge moment for a son, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It was like, holy sh I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the moment. Yeah. <laughs> the only moment yeah. that you faced well, that. I had a tear there. That was about it. I got the tear. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty beautiful, right? Yeah, it, it is, actually. What would the whole family have made of all this that you've become? Just... Well, it's too bad my mom and dad haven't seen it. Both of them died young. You know, my dad by accident, my mom by other things. And uh, But my kids, my kids are in it now. You know, I tell you, I'm so proud of them. It's, I think now it's, it came from my dad to me to my kids. And, and, and I'm, seeing, I'm seeing what maybe he started. It's an unbelievable amount of work that has to go into doing this right. That's my point. Right, you got to get all that in. That's my point. Yes, you think that that's the homes communities. Everything I'm doing on that is bringing in the next generation and training them how to do this, working with the, the First Nations and the yeah. Aboriginals. This is important to me because, you know, we all know the saying, you, know, you can either give them a fish to eat or teach them to fish. Right. Well, I'm going to teach them to build this way. They can build their own after that. And my goal, really, for the next generation is to build better and be proud of what they do. This isn't hard. This is really easy. Work in First Nations community is often considered very difficult to do because of government and politics and, and, and cash flow and all that. How have you found your way through that? Um, I threw that all out the window. I said, don't rely on the government, right? Don't rely on anything else. Rely on yourself. You got money? As, as, the, as a group of people here, do you have some money together? You got to build something. You did have some money come in, so let's take that and let's start building smarter. You want to do that? I'm on your side. If you don't want to do that, I'm not in there. Right. They people, did. And they're open to it. They are open to it. More with Mike Holmes after this. <laughs> All right, up next, a test for Mike. Leave a job unfinished to kiss Angelina. Could you do it? We'll find out. Then, very funny, Deborah DiGiovanni in the Three Things panel. Well, today we're talking about work history and what jobs should be outsourced, like reality shows. And by outsourced, I mean they should be weighted down and thrown into the sea. Okay, guys, let's see the damage. Oh, no damage, really. We would just rather a more contemporary look. Let's make it right. Make what right? What is this? Oh, my God. Uh, you want something done, Ring? Oh. Yeah, do it right the first time. Mark did a pretty good view. Oh, I've met him many times. Yeah. I, I think he got a kick out of doing that, but it's really funny to see someone use you in, in, in a skit, you know, yeah. cartoon skits, one after another. There's been hundreds of these, and it's kind of surreal to look at that for me. It must be bizarre. It was bizarre. Mark Critch is impersonating me as well. Was he afraid when you first walked up to him, though? He was. He thought I might hammer him because he did that. <laughs> Just, he goes, I didn't mean anything. I said, it's fine. He's, he's, he's a funny guy. Um, a lot of what works uh, for what you do, aside from the content, is the fact that you do have this image. This is a strong dude. You got the overalls and the boots on. And it's just this concept of masculinity. Has it changed in this industry for you? Um... It used to be a man's world, and just a man's world. And I think women trying to get into industries was a huge battle, and I, I think that's wrong. You know, I've always said, hire a woman, you know, she'll make the man honest, to be honest. And, am I right? Yeah. He's been on HGTV a long time. He knows what to say. It's true, though. It's not about that. I wouldn't, I, I don't care about that. It's, it's what I feel. Okay. Why shouldn't women get in the trades? Who says men own this? And if men own this, well, you did a pretty crappy job doing it. So give the women a chance, get into it, and work together. Anthropology time. <laughs> what is something in your life that you have blatantly cut corners on, and be honest? Ooh, um, spending more time with my kids. That's the toughest thing about the gig, isn't it? Yeah, working too much. How do you, how do you manage that? Well, now they work with me, and that makes it a lot easier. But, uh, at, you know, growing up, they never saw me. I worked seven days a week. You know, I come home 10 o'clock and I go to bed. And I guess the complaint was, and that helps why, I was, why I'm divorced, and years, years ago that I was divorced, that it makes sense in life what it's like. Well, got to work. I got to pay the bills. But you also have to stop every once in a while and smell the roses and go, okay, you know, I have kids, and I love my kids. Don't get me wrong. But that was one of the things that I definitely cut corners on, but I can't go back on. In the classic spirit of building, is using a nail gun cheating? 
no, absolutely not. This is, you know, it's funny. I swung a hammer for so many years. I laughed at the guys with compressors going wimp. I called them all wimp, right? Yeah. Because I'd swing a hammer like it was a gun. And all of a sudden, one day I used one, I thought, <laughs> why didn't I buy one of these years ago? What is this, macho? <laughs> I tell you. Yeah, because I saved time. Right. I could actually do more, and I, that made sense to me. All right, and who is your, uh, your renovation nemesis? Hillary from Love It or List It or the Property Brothers? Who's my nemesis? The Property Brothers. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, I have no nemesis. They're amazing guys. I'll uh, fix the crap, don't worry. True or false? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> They're nice guys. They're great guys. They're amazing guys. They okay. Are. So you're down in New Orleans, uh, uh, and Angelina Jolie calls you and says, she can meet you. In this universe, you're single and she's single. She says, you can meet me, and I guarantee you we're going to have a kiss. Only if you leave and come kiss me right now. Here's the thing. Leaving right now means the house you're working on won't be finished properly. <laughs> You have to make a choice. The kiss is now or never. Do you do it? Oh, no. I can't do it. No. I, wait, it's, I can't do it. He's been on TV too long. No. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do that because I'm doing something wrong just for a kiss. The kiss I can get later. No, seriously. <laughs> Congratulations on everything. It's so hey, good to see you. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Holmes, everybody. Holmes makes it right. Tuesdays on 18 TV right here in Canada. We'll be right back.